let's talk about the importance of verbal citation and let's use the sample outline I gave you as a resource. So, you already know that it is very important that you have a wealth of information available to you whenever you are crafting a presentation. Whether you're crafting a verbal presentation or you're crafting an essay, having sources is key. Whenever you're writing, you have to remember to cite your sources, say where your information comes from. When you're speaking, this is equally important. And we're going to go over a little bit about how to verbally cite something for the purposes of our class. So in the sample outline that you are given, it is an informational speech. It talks about panic attacks. It talks about what panic attacks are, the sort of effects that they have and the different populations that they affect most frequently. And then it talks about what can be done regarding panic attacks, what treatment options exist for everyone, but especially for the audience that is listening. And you may know what a panic attack is, I may know what a panic attack is. A member of the audience may not know what a panic attack is. And so the first step would be to establish that definition to define the term. Okay. We've talked about defining a term whenever we've talked about um, lectures and lecture comprehension. So for our purposes, then let's define the term. If I say, um, let's see, um, Panic attacks involve unexpected and repeated episodes of intense fear accompanied by physical symptoms. If I say that to you, your first thought should be, how do you know that? How do you know what a panic attack is? I'm citing something, or I'm quoting something rather, but I'm not citing it for you. So what I should say is, as defined by the National Institute of Mental Health, panic attacks involve, and I quote, unexpected and repeated episodes of intense fear accompanied by physical symptoms. So in that case, you have the definition. I have cited where I took that direct quote from. That one might have been a little confusing because you could make the argument that everybody should know what a panic attack is, even if they shouldn't. But let's try it with a different statistic. So. If I want to talk about the frequency with which the general populace experiences panic attacks, I might say that 6 million Americans suffer from panic attacks. 6 million Americans. How do I know that? I could be blowing smoke, which means that I could be making up that number and my audience would never know. I have no credibility as a speaker unless I can... I, have my sources, um, hold on. <laughs> let me try again. I have no credibility as a speaker unless I have appropriate sources and I need to convey those sources to my audience. So in this case, instead of just jumping in with, did you know 6 million people, 6 million American people suffer from panic attacks? I should instead say, according to the American Psychiatric Association, Six million Americans suffer from panic attacks. That lends me credibility. I have a source. You know that I have a source. And especially if you're crafting an argument, a persuasive argument, you want your words to be backed up by evidence. Evidence. So let's do this again. If I want to talk about the treatment options available for people with panic attacks, um, I might say that there's a form of therapy called Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Um, it's abbreviated as CBT. And I could say that, well, CBT is very useful and helpful for people who suffer from panic attacks. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. How do I know that? How do I know that? I need to cite where I took that information from. I'm an ESL teacher. I'm not qualified to you know, diagnose mental conditions or really discuss them in any detail without 
appropriate evidence. So instead of just dropping the cognitive behavioral therapy, I would say where I learned that information. I would say that according to David Barlow, author of Clinical Handbook of Psychological Disorders, cognitive behavioral therapy can be highly effective for people who experience panic attacks. So in that case, I said, who wrote the book that I got the information from, what the book was called, and what was said, okay? So when you get a statistic from a source, you need to cite that source. Um, if you get information or a quote from an author, you need to make that very plain. You can cite statistics um, and cite words, but it's very important that when the words directly are coming from a place, you're not summarizing them, that you emphasize that you are quoting a person. So um, if the quote is, let's see if I can find a good example in this particular essay. Yes. Okay, let's go back to our first example. As defined by the National Institute of Mental Health, panic attacks involve unexpected and repeated episodes of intense fear accompanied by physical symptoms. I read that very quickly. Let's slow it down. Um, where did the quote begin, the actual quotation? In this case, the quotation began with unexpected and repeated episodes. So if you wish to be even clearer about where your quote begins, you could say, the National Institute of Mental Health defines panic attacks as involving, quote, okay, that was a little wordy, a little verby, um, but you understand the concept. And that's really what I want right now is to drive home the fact that you have to verbally cite all of your sources. Yes, you will turn in a bibliography to me if you haven't already, and I hope that you have, but your audience does not have access to a bibliography and summary of each source. You have to provide that information to them as you present. And they can't go back and read it later and be like, oh, well, where did he get this piece of knowledge from? Let me check a footnote because there are none of those because you are presenting live. So we're gonna practice verbally citing information in class together, but I really wanted to drive home today its importance.